When you're building a van, there's a lot to think about. There are hundreds and hundreds of parts and everybody knows they gotta be careful with weight. Weight is a big issue when you're building a van, right? You can't overload the van. And one thing that I never hear anybody talk about is if God forbid you get in an accident and your van was determined to be overweight, you may not be covered. Did you ever think of that? I've never heard anyone talk about it, but I bet it's true. Anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm gonna weigh a few things that go in the van. Some things that you would never consider factoring in to the weight of the van, but it adds up. Where do you see this? I've got the Centec 3000, a water pump, okay? This water pump on its own is six pounds, 13 ounces. Now you only really need one of them, but I foresee in the future, I'll be building vans with two water pumps. This is a different water pump. This one is seven and a half pounds. So there's a pound and a half difference between these two brands. This one is five gallons per minute, 65 PSI. This one's four gallons per minute, 55 PSI. So when you're working on which water pump should I get, factor in the weight. It adds up. Every pound counts. Just like nickels turn into dollars. Wiring. This is 12-3. Ancor stranded tinned wire. The best of the best. It's all I use. 12-3 is typically used for 120 volt runs, 20 amp circuits. I would also use this uh, if I needed to send a, a DC ground, if I need to send three wires somewhere, get a ground over there as well, and a switch, I would use 12-3, and then I'd mark it accordingly on the ends, red and black. But anyway, this is a 100-foot roll. I easily, easily go through 100 feet of 12-3 in a single van build, easily. Probably, probably closer to 200 feet. It's 12 pounds. That's just one roll of, of one. Now, how much wire is in the van? This one roll, which you're going to use, is 12 pounds. This one, this is crazy. This is, this is number six wire, six two. Now, I would use this, this is heavy. I would bring down my solar lines, even though they're in series. I might bring them down on eight or six wire to cut back on the resistance, and we get more volts to the, to the controller, 30 pounds, this wire. Now, I'm not gonna use 100 feet of six wire in a van. So, you're not talking about 30 pounds. You might be talking about five. Here, 18 wire, 18 two, I use this throughout the van. I go through hundreds and hundreds of feet of this. I use this for all my lighting, all my lighting switch legs, 18. So, this is light. This is not a big deal. It's three pounds, three pounds. Uh, this is a biggie. This is one of my favorite wires to work with. This is four aught cable, okay? Four aught is what you need to get from your battery to your bus bar, from your bus bar to your inverter, from your alternator to your bus bar, okay? So the alternator up front and your bus bar is typically in the back. You're looking at 20 feet for a positive, 20 feet, for a negative, that's twice. Now this is 50 feet. So this is pretty much all the wire you'd put in, 40 pounds. So the wires that you run from your alternator back to the bus bar, it's a very common run in any van build where you have an alternator charging your house battery. 40 pounds of wire, that's crazy, right? Pretty cool though. I like weighing stuff. Here is my plumbing manifold. It's a beautiful thing. It brings me to tears every time I build one. Uh, but this is all, min this is necessary. This is bare minimum. This is what's necessary to get the plumbing going. We're sucking the water up from the tank. We're sending it over to the manifold and then around the van it goes. So this is not a big deal. It may be a little overkill, maybe. Let's see what this weighs on its own. 
13 and a half pounds. So your plumbing manifold with the pump, remember we already said the pump was six pounds. So you're 13 and a half pounds on that. My uh, electrical box, this is something else that causes me to go for the tissues, the Kleenex. Look at this, how beautiful this is, right? Look, all right. This is a good solid box. Oh, 22 pounds. 22 pounds for your electrical. And I didn't tie in any wires yet. This is just the panel. You know how this is all gonna add up? Pretty cool. What else? This is tongue and groove Douglas fur. We're gonna whitewash this and make it real rustic uh, and, and very beachy, very beachy theme in both of these vans. Uh, so this is going on the side walls in the garage, in the back of the van, under the bed, side walls of the garage. This is one side wall worth of tongue and groove. So we would double this, 21 pounds. So you got 42 pounds of trim, okay? See how this is adding up? It's crazy. This is the flooring we're putting in the van. Okay, this is a linen cherry. It's a click lock vinyl floor. Totally waterproof. This is one box of flooring for the van. 33, 34 pounds. This box is 34 pounds. We need four of these to finish the van. And that's just the front. I'm not putting this in the garage. The front two thirds of the van need four boxes of this. So you're over 120 pounds just for the flooring. Not to mention the subfloor, right? That goes in. Look at that. I should have locked these wheels before I started this. The water tank. This is a five gallon, I'm over here now. This is a five gallon water tank, okay? Wilbasto, one of my favorites. Now this is empty. This doesn't have water in it. So we're gonna add five times 8.3 pounds per gallon to 30. So 8.3 times five plus 30. That's the overall weight of this when it's making your hot water. Not to mention the lines that go up front to the heat exchanger to make the hot water. This is a little baby microwave. Microwaves can be pretty heavy. This one is not so bad. This is a little baby. And it's 25 pounds. You're adding all this up? Are you getting this? 25 pounds. Now, we're gonna get into something that you would never consider. Try to keep that noise down, Ron. Oh, if I do this, I won't be able to see. Okay, that's two pounds. Two pounds. If I bring over, this is 70 feet of Thinsulate, okay? I use two of these rolls for an extended van. I use 140 linear feet of Thinsulate, and it's expensive. And this roll is 27 pounds. So I'm using 54 pounds of Thinsulate, which you would think is as light as a feather, right? It's crazy. What else? What else did I bring out for demonstration purposes? I think that's it, I covered everything. Ah. Well, I'm gonna weigh this, but I realized I gotta make a project out of 80-20 versus plywood versus wood construction. Most people build out their vans, most DIYs, and a lot of professional builders, now that I come to think about it, will use two by two stick framing, pine. This is garbage wood, it's crapola. It doesn't hold a screw, it splits, most of the time, but this is what they use. And this, this piece right here 
is 2.2 pounds, two and a quarter pounds. And I cut this to the same length as one of my 10 series 8020. These are both exactly the same length, two and a quarter pounds for the wood, which, you know, you need a gazillion of those to get the same job done as 18020. This is three and a quarter pounds. So the same length, it's a pound heavier. However, and this goes towards me having to build out uh, a box to show you the difference. With the wood framing, uh, you're gonna also need some plywood panels to complete your box framing. This panel is 12 pounds, okay? This could be the end cap. It's gotta also appear on either side of a drawer box and then the other end. So there's four of these, plus your little two by two across the front and the back, and maybe a third one that way. Whereas if we do our framing with 8020, the next step for us is we will use quarter inch material, wrap it or laminate it and put it in the channel. All of our structure, and all of our strength comes from the 8020 itself. And it's far stronger than wood. I've got to do, you know what I have to do? I'm gonna tell you what I have to do. I'm gonna have to build out an exact galley in plywood box construction and another galley in my 8020, the way I do them. 18 deep, 60 long. That's basically uh, the, gal the best galley you're gonna get in these bigger vans. 18 deep, 60 long, 33 high. Uh, I'm gonna have to build them both out and we'll weigh them. And we'll see what that comes out to. So you can see how important it is to pay attention to the weight because there are certain things you're gonna put in that van build that you don't even consider goes towards the weight concerns, but it does because everything adds up. Every little pound adds up. And think about all the hundreds of different components that are in a van. You may not even know it until you get through one build. This is Humble Road Vehicle Number One. All right, well, you have your last car to car. Thank you. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> All right, let's get this baby home, put her back to bed, and get back to work. So. We've been, we've been weighed for the second time. These numbers look really good. It looks like she's in the 85th percentile. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna compare these numbers to what we have at home, and we'll see what these bones weigh. Hmm. Uh, we didn't do so bad here. I'm actually surprised it was this much. When we started with the empty way months ago, uh, it was 6,240, 6,240 pounds. Now, with everything that you saw in here, we're at 6,880. That's only 640 pounds that I've added to the van. It's incredible. I do a spreadsheet of all the different items, the big components I put in the van. It's over 200 line items of stuff that goes in the van. That doesn't even, you know, I don't count my hardware, my screws, my bolts, caulk. All this stuff adds up. It's incredible. I wanted to show you this. Milk crate, bucket, another milk crate. These are the cutoffs. These are the cutoffs for six large vans and two mini me's. Every van build, that I've done. All the 8020 cutoffs are right here. From van number one, then I went to Vagabond, then I went to Mr. and Mrs. Sprinter and Sam's van. Now I've got the two transits and two mini-me's. 
So I got eight vans. These are the cutoffs. This is the waste. That bucket's not even full. And what we'll do is, you know, this kind of a length starts as a cutoff, but then we'll go back in and use these. We may need a four inch piece, a three inch, a six inch piece. So we'll dig through here and we'll find a piece. We'll find the smallest piece that's gonna work for what we're looking for. And then if we cut off what we need and we're left with a little tiny nub, that goes back in. Look at this, this is nothing at all. This is, this is very efficient. We've used that 80-20 to the max. Now I'm gonna see if 80-20 in uh, Ohio will take this back and possibly recycle it. You know, this, I mean, it's not a lot compared to their volume, but come on, what else would you do with this? We would keep some of it. Like I said, uh, we, we dip in here and we, we cut it down when we need it. This bin is all the 15 series. This big bin is 15. These two are 10 series. So clearly we use more 10 series now than 15. Hey George, give me a full apple box in there and set it up Chicago. You, you got it boss. The mini me. Mini me number three. I can't wait. I'm so excited to start this one. As you know, we did two mini me's. Uh, those were our first two. And that's where we worked out all our designs. It took us the better part of a year. Uh, the beauty of it now, the CNC was tailor made to build these mini me's. It's perfect. It's like using your printer at home. Once you get the shapes and the curves the way you want them, you hit print and it prints out and we use masonite. So we'll use a piece of masonite, we'll cut it out. We fit that panel in place. Let's pull back a little here. Let's increase the radius there. We nip and tuck, print another one, put it up. That way we got every one of these panels perfect. We got them just the way we want them. Same thing with the 8020. Now when we build these galleys, we're gonna be able to build them out on the table as one unit, full, complete, and working. So we can do all of our water and electrical testing out there with the bench chargers. And then we take the whole module, slide it in on the floor, fasten it to the wall on the floor. It's semi-mass production. So this is a gal uh, who lives on the border, uh, where I won't say, but she's part of some group, the, the Flying Sisters or the the Sisters of the Holy Crock-Pot, I don't know, uh, but they're a group, they're a hoot. They travel all over the country, over the continent, I think, together. So uh, she's gonna have a blast with this. I have two left. This was the first in a three vehicle purchase from a, a dealer that I, I was able to get three of them from this one dealer. This was the first one. Now, when the next one comes in, you know, they haven't come in yet. They, the, you would think the three would come in all at once, but they didn't. This one came in first, so I called the, the person who had asked me first for the next Mini-Me. She got it. She went to the dealer. She made the purchase. She drove the van here to me. Uh, as in the next van now, when that comes in, I've got two days to get a buyer on that van, or they're going to sell it right out from under me, even though I gave them a deposit. You imagine? Am I still talking up there? Check, check. Okay, now right, calm down, George. <sighs> now, if you want to buy a mini me and you're out of state and you can't come here to the dealer and buy it, I get it. We can do that all through FedEx or I'll buy the van and then you reimburse me and take over the financing. It's simple. I did that with one of the first vans as well. This one is going to be white oak. I have been very excited to do a white oak, ver white oak version of this van. And she wants the very same gray floor that I put in my first van, the same floor I put in Sam's van. I'm putting it in this van. It's a beautiful floor. It's got so much beautiful depth in it. It's got warm tones, tans. It's got all different shades of gray. I think 50 shades of gray. Uh, and then we're going to do the dove gray walls. And she brought up an interesting point. In the first two vans, I put a fabric on these sliding doors and the rear doors. This gal wants matching wall fabric. 
So if you're dove gray here, she wants dove gray here. Interesting. And I think she's right. It's going to make this feel a little bit bigger. So stay tuned. We'll be starting this soon as well. All right, George, get that apple box out of there. Okay, boss. I got to bring up some negativity. I got to talk about something I'm not happy to discuss, but it has to be discussed for all our sakes. It has to do with a company called Seahead. I ordered two Seahead composting toilets in February and the first day of March. And since then, I have not heard from that company in any which way, matter, shape, or form. I have emailed, I have called, I have left messages. I'm getting no response. So I've got over $2,000 worth of toilets. I don't know where they are. I don't know if I'm ever gonna get them. It's July. I ordered them the end of February and the first week of March. I understand they're talking about a 10 week lead time, but that only went up a short while ago. It was not up when I made my order. Regardless of that fact, I think the company owes their customers some correspondence. Reach out, say something. Let me know you haven't just taken all our money and left with it. And you got this empty house full of uh, buckets that we're supposed to use as toilets. This is not the way to run a business. I'm sorry, I have to say it. I'm very concerned. I laid out the money on behalf of my clients. I may get beat for that money. Where are those toilets? I need something from these people at Seahead. Reach out and tell us you're alive and you're working on getting us our toilets instead of just giving us the cold shoulder. You're shadowing us, you're ghosting us. It's not the way to run a business. I would never do this, never. No matter how bad things are, I always keep my clients apprised of the situation, whether it's progress or we're going the other way. I always stay honest up front, and that's what I expect from the customer, or the companies I deal with. I'm not happy about this. I may never buy another sea head toilet. A good friend of the shop just bought a Winnebago Revel, a four by four sprinter, shorty. And he's very excited. He's new to this lifestyle and he jumped right in. So he and his wife are gonna be traveling all over the place. And part of what they wanna do is camp on the beach. They actually live down here at the beach. Uh, so we've got a beautiful state park right down the road where you can spend the night fishing and camping on the beach if you have the right equipment and the right vehicle. And he does. So uh, he's a friend of the shop. Barry comes in and, and works for us a few days a week. And uh, I says, listen, you're gonna need a compressor. You're gonna get down on that beach. You're gonna let the air out of your tires. You're gonna have a wonderful time. Sunrise, breakfast and coffee on the beach. It doesn't get any better than that. But then when you come off the beach, you need to air up those tires again from 20 pounds back up to whatever you got, 60, 70, 80 pounds. So I looked at a bunch of compressors. I decided I would go with Viair. I like the company. I like the reviews I read and the product looks like it's pretty good. So I'm gonna do an install for Barry on his van of this compressor. And the reason I'm doing that is I'll film it. It'll be one of my weekly videos, how to install a Viair compressor in a van. Uh, but I'm gonna install these in all of my large builds from now on. It just makes sense. If they are four by fours, and uh, they have any inkling of going on a beach anywhere. They got to let those tires down. They're going to have to get them filled back up. This is the way to do it. 